Even before written records, indigenous societies have long recognized and nurtured the connections between the well-being of people, plants, animals, and the environment. So what we call a One Health approach today was just really common practice a long time ago. Shouldn't we return to ancient wisdom? Formally, One Health recognizes the health of humans, all animals and plants, and the environment the wider environment, and that these are interdependent in a complex ecosystem. There are intrinsic benefits to pursuing a health for all approach. Who would say no to that? It's just the right thing to do. However, there may be prudent reasons to balance health broadly. Consider these facts. 60% of human infectious diseases are of animal origin. COVID-19 was an infectious disease of probable animal origin. By some estimates, the cost of COVID-19 was eight to 16 trillion US dollars. We know that when people get sick, when animals are not well, when plants are diseased, they have significant impacts on the global economy and they affect the productivity and sustainability of our interconnected agri-food system. All in all, we have evidence to suggest that the biological threats, zoonotic diseases, and antimicrobial resistance, which has risen through the excessive use of antimicrobials in the medical, vet, and agri-food systems, collectively they shave off on average 5% of global agricultural GDP. So we know that there's an ecological interdependence, and so this One Health approach calls for an integrated strategy to sustainably balance and optimize the health of people, animals, plants, and the environment. There is growing evidence of a return on investment in One Health. With that in mind, organizations including FAO, WHO, UN Environmental Program, World Organization for Animal Health, the so-called quadripartite, have developed an overarching framework called the One Health Joint Plan of Action. This calls for collaboration and coordination across sectors, but it also calls for increased social investment. We know that close to 10% of global GDP is spent on human health overall. However, despite some political and financial support for the concept of One Health, coordinating financing or coordinated financing over all domains of One Health so human, animal, plant, and the environment sectors remains fairly limited according to recent research by Machaleba and Associates in 2017. Most recent estimates of the cost of pandemic prevention guided by One Health principles range from 10.3 billion to about 11.5 billion per year. These include core competencies of vet services, on-farm biosecurity for high-risk zoonotic diseases, and reduce deforestation and forest fragmentation. So first and foremost, national governments are called upon to invest in One Health by mobilizing domestic resources. Beyond that, the demand for public finance, um, oh, beyond the demand for public finance, the private sector has a key role to play in terms of sustainable financing, innovation, and action. However, we know that low and middle income countries cannot be called on to bear these costs alone. They require resource partners and investors, both internally and internationally. The World Bank Financing Modalities Report listed funding coming from multilateral development banks, specialized institutions such as FAO and WHO, pooled mechanisms such as the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, Gavi are other examples, bilateral partners and organizations, philanthropies and private sector actors are all engaged in this work. These institutions are already playing a key role in offering a range of financing mechanisms, modalities that support PPR investments and health systems stre strengthening more broadly. However, Based on my experience, more needs to be done. Funding and financing for animal and plant health 
have become less consistent, especially when resources are scarce. And these are leading to adverse impacts on food security, agri-food system sustainability, and farmer livelihoods. Existing institutions and partners involved in Global One Health financing, their efforts must be reinforced. They need better coordination to provide the necessary support across all domains of One Health. Over the past year, I've been conducting research on different organizations and entities that could serve as partners for One Health financing. This research has led me to conclude that the global financial architecture for One Health is a complex landscape. I have five main points to make about this complexity. Let me explain. First, it is useful to distinguish how different entities provide financial support. On one continuum, we, give, we begin with investors, such as private or national banks, who seek a financial return on investment. On the other side of this continuum are resource partners who usually comp comprise national and international development institutions or, in, or philanthropic organizations, such as foundations. We also have government ministries that provide direct budget support to national one Health initiatives. Second, partnerships can also extend to include global research organizations. For example, CGIAR and STARIDAS convene research groups on various themes within the banner of One Health. These research organizations can be entry points into different types of financial supports, such as grants or budget support. Third, the ecosystem for international One Health resource partners is a complex constellation of entities. So we can start off with like large players, bilateral donors, such as European Commission, UK, Germany, Japan, and various foreign aid and agricultural agencies within the US that is a substantial donor in this area. These agencies often have a designated first point of contact within the agency's local or regional office or within the embassy. For example, the US Department of Agriculture Foreign Ag Service has a list of agricultural foreign service offices that could help develop proposals. Fourth, investors habit a continuum of their own. They include private commercial banks, national development banks, regional development banks, and multilateral development banks. Investors, especially national development banks, typically evaluate projects based on financial returns. However, a small number of NDBs, RDBs, and MDBs also have other goals or ascribe to environmental or other larger social development goals, such as SDGs that we have from the UN. So what unites investors is financial ROI, but their purposes and strategies might be slightly different. Fifth, we have financial intermediary funds or vertical funds. These are financial arrangements that typically leverage a variety of public and private resources to support international initiatives. Financial intermediary funds enab enable a direct and coordinated response to global priorities. The pandemic fund, the Adaptation Fund are good examples of investor vehicles set up with a multilateral development bank framework, and these pursue social goals. There are 28 financial intermediary funds associated with the World Bank. In 2023, financial intermediary funds' collective assets amounted to 45 billion US dollars. FIFs, as they are known, support global programs mostly focused on the provisioning of global public goods. Examples of these global public goods include preventing communicable diseases, responding to climate change, and food insecurity. To stress once again, investment starts with the national government, and it can ensure country ownership and sustainability, and then from that initial country government investment, we fan out to develop other partnerships, both internally and externally.
First, let me start by giving you a flavor of the type of information you can find in these profiles that I compiled. Details within these profiles include an organizational overview, explanation of funding cycles, organizational funding priorities, both organized thematically and geographically, as well as other helpful information on how to engage the potential partner by preparing partnership proposals. For example, in the profile of the pandemic fund, I go over a brief background of the fund. As you all know, maybe that the fund was created by the World Bank. The World Health Organization is the technical lead. The fund's purpose is to pool donor resources into a single investment vehicle to support pandemic prevention, preparedness, and response, also called PPR. The fund channels its resources through 13 implementing entities according to a results framework. Priority areas in the past have been comprehensive disease surveillance and early warning systems, lab systems, and human resources for public health and community and building community workforce capacity. I also provide links on tutorials on how to pre, uh, prepare proposals, how proposals are evaluated, and uh, different data on the calls. Uh, a second example I'd like to share is Germany. Um, for bilateral resource partners, one of the things you have to realize is that I've provided similar types of information, providing backgrounds of the different types of agencies through which fundings are funding is channeled, but linking the reader to documents that define their bilateral areas of priority. So bilateral resource partners habit their own organizational continuums. For example, the German government provides its official development assistance through a variety of entities. All of its entities reflect national priorities in documents that I link out in the profiles. Funds are provided under the overall lead of the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ in German, but also through GIZ, a bilateral aid agency. GIZ also makes contributions to global funding mechanisms like the Green Climate Fund and so on and so forth. KFW is a national development bank that works with a variety of actors, including the private sector. In other words, this example of the Germ German government spanning multiple resource partner types under the name of different agencies, but guided by similar strategies and goals is worth noting. So going forward, I hope these bilateral resource profiles and other profiles will be expanded and updated to provide help helpful information for your resource mobilization teams.